Good afternoon and uh, welcome to Condo Insider and my name is Jane Sugimura. I'm your host for this uh, show and today we've got a very exciting topic. Uh, we're going to be talking about neighborhood board elections and we have as our guest today we have Harry Cho and you're the uh, the uh, public relations public assistant. relations spe uh, assistant. assistant for the neighborhood commission. Yes thank you for having me here today. And uh, you uh, how long have you been with the uh, commission? Um, so I've been with the office for about a year and a half now. Okay, and, and what do you do uh, with the com commission? Uh, so I started as a neighborhood assistant. Um, so as a neighborhood assistant, we would attend um, all the 33 neighborhood board meetings around the island. We would basically serve as the administrative assistant to the board. Mm -hmm. um, we would help out the chair. Um, and also one of the main duties was to produce the minutes as well. Okay, and you're here to talk about the neighborhood board elections, so tell us. I mean, there are people out there who probably don't know that they have a neighborhood board in their right. neighborhood. So the board's been around, the board system has been around for a long time now. It was actually created in 1973 under then Mayor Frank Fossey. And it was basically created to give the community an opportunity to uh, speak face-to-face -face with their elected officials and government departments. And so how many neighborhood boards are there in Oahu? So there's 33 boards around the island of Oahu. Um, these boards meet usually once a month. They may recess a month or two throughout the year. But these uh, monthly meetings happen within the, the district that the person lives in, so it's very accessible. So you might. So there's a neighborhood board in Hawaii Kai. There's one yes. in Waikiki. Absolutely. There's one in Mo'ilili. Mm -hmm. There's one in Ma Manoa, Maikuli, Eva. North Shore. I, I am Pro Ridge, I mean Pro Pro City, there's right. Waipahu, they're all over Mililani. Right. And the North Shore. Right. Right? They're all over the place. Yes. Kaneohe, Kailua, right? Yes, all over the island. And so who serves on these neighborhood boards? So the boards are um, they're comprised of uh, board members which are actually elected uh, people who are volunteers who are non paid but elected by the people that live it within their district. So the people in Hawaii Kai vote for people in Hawaii Kai, right? And the people in Waikiki vote. And in those areas, like Hawaii Kai, there are also subdistricts. Subdistricts, well. right? Right. So that the people uh, who live in, like in my area, mm -hmm. we where where I am, and I think we've got five subdistricts, right. and one of them happens to be like Pearl Ridge. So that would be right around the area where Poly, uh, the Polymomi uh, the the uh, uh, hospital is, mm -hmm. right? And the shopping center, right. and so I think that that's one subdistrict, and then we've got one uh, that's uh, closer to the IAEA uh, shopping center, mm -hmm. and 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 so so those people who live in that district vote actually vote for the people who are going to serve from that district, right? Right. right. Okay. And and uh, and and what happens at these neighbors? I mean, well, why are these? Uh, uh, neighborhood uh, okay. board set up. So these boards were created so that um, the community can come face to face with their elected officials. Um, although they have no uh, power per se, uh, many city governments, uh, city departments rely on the neighborhood boards um, to uh, make the decisions in government. And, and so, so it's basically a sounding board. Right. Right? Because I know we had at our neighborhood board meeting, and I was talking to you before the show, we had the Department of Environmental Services come mm -hmm. out right. and talk to us about a pilot project where they're going to do bulky item pickups mm -hmm. by appointment. Right. Right? And it was like, wow. And so how is this going to work? And, and so they, they basically put on a presentation. Mm -hmm. And of course, I gave him an earful because I says, you know, mm -hmm. I think we're going to have a problem with condominiums. Because where I live, we got seven condominiums. And we're talking about, you know, you telling us that we're, we're going to now call for an appointment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, somebody's going to come and pick up the bulky item pickup. Right. And you pay for it. And the issue becomes, then who pays for it? The association? because we're the ones who have to do the calling, or is it the homeowners who give their stuff to the association to put on the curb? Right, so these are the types of top topics that are discussed at the neighborhood board meetings. Mm -hmm. And it's very important because um, the, the board meetings are publicly recorded. Most of them are publicly recorded. Um, the minutes are um, public record and they're all online on our website. We also have a video archive with Olelo, so if anyone wants to watch past meetings, they could do that as well. 
And, and so the, the people who, and in our meeting, it was the Environmental Services Department. Mm -hmm. That's a city department. Right. And so you're talking to city employees, right. right? And so they came out to give the presentation. So hopefully they took back the Input, feedback, right. all the questions and the concerns that were raised. I mean, the whole purpose of them coming out and talking to us was to get feedback From the and, and, and go back to their uh, offices and tell their supervisors and, and maybe people like the mayor mm -hmm. that maybe, you know, Things are not, you know, they, they have to be tweaked. Right, right. Because, you know, the people raise some concerns, and it's like, well, how do you do this, and how do you do that, and how come this, and how come that? And so it, it gives a chance for, for really people who live in the community to voice uh, their opinion. To, to voice their opinion. Right. And last month, there was this other issue about parking areas. Mm -hmm. I guess it's Bill 70 that the city passed out, mm -hmm. where if you want to sign a petition, you can apply to the city, and, and basically what it does is it says that you can't park on your streets in your neighborhood mm -hmm. unless you have a permit, right? Okay. So that's Bill 70. And so, and, and I think it was Joey Monahan, Council Member Monahan, whose bill it was, and it was, and we had Carol Fuku, Council Member Carol Fukunaga at our meeting at, at that time. And so she was able to answer a whole lot of questions mm -hmm. because there was some, I mean, there, there, there's a community that lives right next to the stadium. And so they were really interested in that because they said that when there's a football game or a concert, mm -hmm. there's all these strangers parking in, in their streets. Right. And it gets so bad that some, of the, some people can't get out of their driveways. Right, so these are great topics that anyone can bring up at the neighborhood board meetings. Right, and, and so the city, well, of course, I'm, you know, I kind of felt bad for the council member because you know, she, she said that, well, you know, it wasn't quite implemented yet and it mm -hmm. has to go through the budget process because money has to be allocated. But there were these people who lived across the street from the stadium and they were just ready to go. They said, where do we sign? Mm -hmm. you know, where do we sign up? We want to get a petition and we'll right. get it signed. We'll get it down to the city. So, oh, but you can't you know, do anything yet. We, you know, we don't have any money appropriated. But you know, this, I, I, I think it's a great, form. I mean, you know, maybe not every meeting is interesting or controversial or or, but you know, it's a great way, you know, f for you know the city to talk to the people right. you can and get face input. With... And a lot of people will grumble. They they, right. they go and, and you know it's, it's it's a way to vent. And you know there are city officials there, mm -hmm. right? There's somebody there from the mayor's office, and usually the council members or somebody from their staff is there. Right. And you have people from the legislature, your senators, yeah. or your and house of house representatives, or their staff members, mm -hmm. and even from the governor's office. Yes. And we have all kinds of people at neighborhood, and this happens at every neighborhood board meeting in the 33 districts. Right. Correct? Right. Right? So this is a terrific opportunity for people who care about what's happening in their neighborhood. And they, or they, you know, maybe, you know, they, they, they're just interested mm -hmm. at, on what's happening. And they can go online to see what the, what's on the agenda. Right. And who's going to come and speak at their, their meeting. Right. So we also have a, a mailing list. So um, a week prior to the date of the meeting, our agendas and the, pro the past month's minutes are either physically mailed out or sent as an email to anyone who signed up for that mailing list. Okay, and so, so this way, anybody who's interested can see, right. you know, what, what's going to be discussed, discussed at their, their meeting, mm -hmm. and they can just be there. Right. They can just be there. Starts, most of the meetings start at 7, 7.30. Yeah. They last for maybe an hour or two, and it's an opportunity for them to uh, basically uh, meet their elected officials or their representatives, mm -hmm. or if they want to grumble, mm -hmm. they can grumble. They got somebody to grumble at, mm -hmm. including a representative from the mayor and the governor's office. And if they have a question, there's people there right. who will you know, write down the question and they'll either get back to you if you give them a phone number or an email address, mm -hmm. or just show up at the next meeting and they, they have to answer your questions. Right, one thing I noticed is that our elected officials are really, um, Good at getting back to the, their constituents, so it really is a great place for anyone who has a concern to show up at our neighborhood board meetings and make that concern public. Yes, and it's and, and it's a good and it's a good way for people to meet their elected officials because exactly. sometimes they don't even know who their elected officials are, right. and and so when you go to your neighborhood board meetings, you meet them all. The council members are there for your district, and your house representatives and your senators, and even you know, uh, and there are other government officials there. 
Right. And so it's it's a it's a good place for you know people who want direct contact with their you know, rather than pick up the phone and talk to mm -hmm. some anonymous voice on the other end. Here they can actually talk to a live body, and that person cannot run away. Right. And that includes the police department and the fire, fire department, department right. board of water supply. I right. mean, you yeah. name it. There's a bunch of different city departments, uh, different organizations, community groups that all show up at these monthly meetings. Right. They are required to be there or send a representative. Well, not required, but uh, they do make a, a concerted effort to to show up at every monthly meeting. Right. And so yes, it, it's a terrific place. You know. For people who, who want to, you know, figure out what's going on. And, and, and I know a lot of times in our, when I, when I go to my meetings, and there's a lot of cars, I figured, oh, God, I got to look at my agenda mm -hmm. to see what's on it. Why is everybody, why are there all these people here? Mm -hmm. Right? And it might be, you know, the, because every, what is it, every zoning permit, every zoning application or liquor license. Is right? Required to, is required to be vetted by the neighborhood board. Not that the neighborhood board has got any type of, Right. official uh, but these, authority. These departments actually rely on the neighborhood board's um, position to, you know, maybe maybe this isn't good for the community, maybe this is good. So they do really heavily rely on the neighborhood board. And that's opinion. why, you know, so that's why any, any zoning permit and, 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 and the zoning permits, I mean, it's usually if somebody wants to put up a care home and and because uh, we've had several of these, they, they want to build a care home and the issue is parking. Right. right. How many cars are there? Is, is this facility, how many cars is it going to introduce to the community? Mm -hmm. And because under the, uh, the, the city ordinances, when you do a, a zoning type of change or a liquor commission application, you have to send notice of the hearing, of the meeting, mm -hmm. to people within, what, 50, a certain amount 100 of distance, feet right. from the facility, yeah. right? So that's why a lot of people, when they get these notices in the mail, they say, aha. I don't want that, li that, that bar down the street to get their liquor license because right. they're too noisy, right. right? So they show up at the neighborhood board meeting mm -hmm. and they vent. Right. And, and that's, that's what it's there for. Because if you get too many people showing up and venting, then the liquor commission is going to think twice before approving, before approving the, right. the, or the zoning. And just like it doesn't, we don't have, we don't have the authority to make a, uh, any type of decision, but it depends on the, the amount of, I guess, public interest. Right, or community feedback. Yeah, community yeah. feedback. And if you get a lot of people, a lot of people who show up and they say, hell no, you're not going to do this, or we don't want that, or oh, this is a terrific idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, gets, that, that, that message goes back to the agency, right? right? And it, it somehow it, it, uh, affects their decision-making process. Right. And so that's why, you know, that's why when, when people get notices of a zoning change or a liquor commission application, or one of these things that require them to show up at a neighborhood board meeting, then that's why they have to show up. Mm -hmm. It's not that we're gonna vote on it, it's because people from the city are there to watch. Exactly. The public, the public reaction. Right. What's, you know, what's going to happen in their neighborhood, and if nobody shows up, it's like, fine. Right. The license gets approved, the zoning change gets approved, no conditions, and, and things like that. So, so that's one of the functions of uh, the neighborhood board. And, you know, so people should, you know, understand that, you know, that's why they get these notices. And if they care or if they, you know, if they, you know, really are upset about it, they need to show up. Yeah, anyone can come on down. They happen right in your district. Uh, they usually happen in the evenings, anywhere between 6.30 to 7.30. It usually lasts two to three hours. So um, anyone who has a concern or is interested in learning more about their community, I really encourage them to come on down. Okay, and so, the, so we're going to take a, uh, a break for about a minute, and when we come back, we're going to talk about this neighborhood board election that's going to happen momentarily, right? Thanks. Okay, we're going to take our break, and when we come back, we'll talk about the election. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests, I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha.
Aloha and mabuhay. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Welcome back to uh, another episode of Kano Insider. My name is Jane Sugimura. I am the host of this show. And my guest today is Harry Cho, and he's uh, with the Neighborhood Commission. And, he's going, and we're talking about Neighborhood Board elections. And the, the, I guess this is a really timely show because the, the, the way an election is run, all registered voters in the county, sitting county of Honolulu, are going to get letters, right? And Absolutely. in fact, you said they were in the mail. So they're in the process of getting mailed out right now. So our neighborhood board elections happen every two years on the odd numbered years. So the last election was in 2017. This year in 2019, we're, uh, we finished our candidate registration. We had 553 total candidates registered. Wow. And that's the second highest that we've actually had uh, in rec NCO's recorded history. Oh my god, that's good. That's so, really good. Uh, Coming off of one of the worst uh, state voter turnouts, we were somewhat worried that we wouldn't get enough candidates or we wouldn't get as high of a candidate participation. Mm -hmm. But we're very proud to announce that we have gotten the second highest candidate participation. In well, that's good. Cool. It's over 500 people running for these 33 neighborhood boards. Right. Right. OK, we're going to be showing you a letter. All of you uh, uh, registered voters are going to be getting, if you have not gotten, you're going to be getting this letter in the mail. Now, Harry, tell them what this uh, letter is all about. All right. So any uh, everyone who voted in the past general election or registered as a voter for the neighborhood board elections with our office should be getting this letter in the mail, if not have already gotten it. Uh, this is basically a a pass a passcode to access your online ballot and every uh, every person will have a unique passcode which will allow them to access their online ballot and just vote online okay so so that that letter that was on the 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 uh, screen we 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 blanked out the passcode that was on there right. but there's a passcode that is there and so what did they do they go on the neighborhood board website there's actually a specific website it's different from our offices. The website is actually www.honolulu.gov slash NBE. And that's on the letter? Yes, all the instructions are on the letter. And if, you, if they don't have a computer, they can go to their library. So if you don't, I, um, we do know not everyone has a computer, has access to a computer, or is familiar with how to, uh, to, to function a computer. So we're trying to make it as inclusive as, as possible. So what we've done is we've made, um, voting sites available at, at other locations. So we'll have voting at um, our office, which is at Kapala Mahale, Kapole Hale, Key Project in Kahalu, and any public state library. And if anyone uh, wants a, a physical ballot, they can just contact our office, provide some information, and we will be happy to send out a physical ballot as well. And that ballot would just have the candidates for their district. Right. So that's why they, they need to be able to, so when they call you, if they don't know what their district is, they just give you a street address. Yeah, they can just ask us, and we can provide that for them right away. So all they do is they con and, and that contact information is on that letter? For our office, yes. So, so, so if they want a paper ballot, there's a phone number there where mm -hmm. they can contact you, yep. and all they have to do is give, them, give you their street address, so, and you can provide them with a ballot right. of the people who are running in their district. Right, so if you would like a paper ballot, just feel free to call our office at 808 Seven six eight three seven one zero. All you need to provide is your name, address, um, and your uh, unique passcode. That's on the mailed ballot. That's on the mailed um, passcode letter that we would send. Okay. And when does this voting start? When can they start to vote? It actually starts tomorrow, uh, April twenty sixth, and runs for a three week period until May seventeenth. 
Okay, so that means that tomorrow morning when they wake up, if they get their uh, letter today mm -hmm. with their special passcode, pass what time tomorrow can they start? I believe it's 7.45 in the morning. Okay, 7.45 tomorrow morning, they can go on the website that's listed on their letter, mm -hmm. and they can vote. Exactly. Okay, and if they uh, don't want to, you know, go on, or if they don't have a computer, they can go to a library, or they can go to the... The, the various places that you named, mm -hmm. or if they want a paper ballot, they can call your office, give you their address, and you will mail them a paper, a paper ballot. ballot. Yes. Okay. Well, that's how, and so and so. There's a three week period when they can do this voting, mm -hmm. and after May 17th, and it's all over. Voting closes, and the results should be announced on the first business day of June. And how do they find that out? It'll be posted on our website. Okay. At Hon um, www.honolulu.gov slash NCO. Okay. And you'll probably print it, have, it, have it printed in the paper as well? No, not this uh, election. We, uh, this, just to save money um, for our office, we're actually only going to be posting it on our website. Okay. So that means that if you don't have a computer, you have to go to a library. Or you could call our office and we could provide that information for okay. you. Okay. You can tell them who won and what, and, and they have to know what area. Right. Okay, and um, uh, so, and how long will the results stay online? Um, they actually should be online um, indefinitely, so they should just stay up there for quite a while. Okay, and, and in some districts, and you know, uh, some districts have got uncontested races. What, why are they uncontested? Um, so it could be for a variety of reasons, but. Uh, one thing I did want to point out is anyone who is in an uncontested district will not be receiving um, their, their uh, online passcodes just to save paper, save money for our office. Oh, so, so if, you, if you live in an area and you don't get this letter in the next week, right? okay, that means that in your district, all of the people who are running, and they can go on the uh, internet. They can and check, our, check on our website as well just to confirm. But if you did not receive a passcode, it's because you are living in an uncontested district. Okay, that means that uh, th there's nobody, th nobody's running for that. I mean, if you have four seats, there are four candidates, so right. they automatically win. Right. Right. Exactly. And so, so, so in those districts, the people, the registered voters who live in that area, will not be getting the letter. Right. And, and so, th so they shouldn't be calling your office if they don't get the letter. Right. But they can call anyways just if they want to make sure. Okay. And then so uh, if it's uncontested, that means that those people are just automatically elected. Exactly. Okay. And, and so if they want to find out who, they're, uh, uh, who those people are because they didn't you know, get a ballot, mm -hmm. they can call your office or they can go online. They can online. go online and we actually have a list of all the candidate profiles on our website. Okay. And, um, and if, if, some, if somebody, you know, can't, uh, if they, you know, if they want to know who won, but they're not really sure about the district that they're in, I mean, how, how, how would you be able to help them? Sure. Uh, just feel free to call our office at any time. You can send us an email as well. We'll be happy to help you through that. Okay. And, and uh, with this, why is the, the, the election done online? So uh, prior to 2009, it was actually all done through mail. So starting in 2009, we did it as a, um, just a cost-saving measure. And just to be more environmentally friendly, it's a lot of paper that goes out to all registered voters. So what actually happened is in 2009, when the voting went predominantly online, there was actually a steep in decrease in voter participation. Before that, there was, um, I think, as a high as up to 40,000, 50,000 voter participation. Mm -hmm. But in 2009, when it first went online, it went to as low as 7,000, I believe. But um, through the years, we have seen a steady increase every election uh, as the voter participation increases again. So in the last 2017 election, we had just over 20,000. So we are on the right path, and I believe it's just a matter of time before voting participation is through the roof again. Okay. And if anybody has a, a question about, you know, this election and, and, you know, one of them might be, well, I didn't get my ballot, mm -hmm. you know, 
and, and your, your answer to that is, well, that's because in your district there are no contested races. So if, they, if you haven't received your ballot by May 3rd, then uh, I suggest calling our office. But if you do live in a contested district and are a registered voter, you should be receiving your um, online passcode prior to May 3rd. Okay. And, and, and if they haven't registered by now, it's too late, right? Yeah, so that, uh, the voting registration actually closed with candidate registration back in February. Okay, so that means that um, if they have not registered to vote, and this, is, this would be for, to vote for anything, mm -hmm. right? And you had a special registration just for the neighborhood board elections right. that ended in February. Right. So, so really, if, 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 if the person, the, the, the resident in any of these districts is not registered to vote, it's too late for them to register. Sorry to say, but yes. Yeah. Okay, so, so they have to do it for the next time. Yep, in 2021. Okay. All right. And um, how long do these people who get elected now serve? So it is a fairly long commitment. Um, board members are sworn in for a two-year term. Um, we do have board members come and go here and there, so there are vacancies. So another thing I wanted to point out is, um, for those of you who are interested in uh, being a board member but missed, say, the, the candidate registration, there still, um, there still could be a vacancy in whatever district they live in. So I would suggest keeping track of the agenda and making sure that they know when these uh, vacancies occur. And they can always call your office to find out where the vacancies are. And I think talking before the show, you said that there were at least 15 vacancies in the 33 district areas. Um, well, there's vacancies all around uh, in every neighborhood board. Mm -hmm. um, most boards have maybe one or two vacancies here and there. Mm -hmm. But they are fa uh, filled fairly quickly because there are always people who want to join the board. And the way they can do that is they can just contact the neighborhood board, the neighborhood commission, which is your office, and their your number is on that letter. Or they can just contact their uh, local neighborhood board, the chair, or maybe even a committee member, uh, because they, they can notify the chair and say, oh, you know, my neighbor Joe Blow, uh, he wants to be on the board. So the process would be the formal process would be for the person to come down to the neighborhood board meeting. Um, a board member would have to nominate that person, and the board would then vote on whether to. Um, allow the person on the board or not. Right. And, you know, and, and, and being, you know, on this board, I mean, you know, it, it, you know, sometimes it can be very, very interesting, very challenging. And, but this is basically the grassroots Absolutely. politics, Absolutely. right? This is the, 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 the very ground, you know, this is, this is grassroots uh, at, at, at its purest. Right. I mean, because you're talking about people who live in the neighborhood, talking about issues that, you know, really concern them, right? And here they're, you know, they, they can talk face to face with the government officials that are the decision makers. And, and, and in many instances, they are able to be very persuasive, right. you know, to these people, the, these decision makers. So it's up to, it, it is really to, in everybody's best interest to become involved and to elect people who are going to promote the process and make it transparent and and make it meaningful, you know, to their community. So I thank you very much for assisting in the process. Thank you. And, uh, and, uh, and I wish you good luck in this election, and hopefully we get a lot of people voting. And also, hopefully, I ho uh, hope we can come back to after the election period and discuss um, what the results were. Oh, yeah. That, that, that'll be our, uh, the next show that you guys will be on. Great. Okay, and thank you very much for joining us for this episode of Condo Insider which is the show uh, regarding uh, people who live in condos and work in condos. And please uh, join us next week for another uh, interesting program. And uh, Richard Emery will be the host for that. Again, uh, thank you and mahalo. Thank you.